Hi, welcome to another tutorial with me, Tim Clapham from hellolux.com. In this tutorial, we're gonna be looking at working with the Redshift 2 material to create a nice tone map setup. It's really flexible and easy to use and allows you to try all sorts of variations nice and quickly. And as you can see, I'm working in Cinema 4D, but this technique will work in any of the DCCs that support Redshift. Now in this scene, I've got this soldier guy and this is a model by an artist called Sean Keenan, which I downloaded a long time ago. So we're going to come up and we're going to create material and we're going to add a toon material. This material I'm going to drop onto this plane object and also onto the actual cloner. Now let's come over and start the render view so we can have a look at the result with the default material. And there we go and you can see that the result has this banding in it. And this is because we have this ramp here which is feeding into the tone map and if we look at that ramp you can see down here it is indeed been posterized. If we just start this render view again and let's come over and have a look. So in here we've got three lights. I've got this point light and two area lights. Now to create this sort of banding you do need to be using either really small area lights and you can see that these are five centimeters. And if we come here and have a look you can see it's right over here so it's quite a long way away. So it is essentially almost a point light. The larger the area light the softer this banding will become. And then here in the foreground we have a point light as well which is creating the banding on the front. If we switch that off you can just see the contribution of those area lights to give a little bit of fill at the back. Come down select the toon material and under reflection let's just set the weight to zero so we don't need to worry about reflection for now and on the contour node let's just disable the external and the internal lines. So we're really just focusing on the tone map if we grab this ramp and pull this over and then press C, type tone map, we can drop that into the network and then we can wire this in. So this will allow us to introduce a pattern and with that selected we can see over here we have half tone and we have colors, scale, etc, rotation. So let's just see what the default setting looks like. There we go. So I'm going to just make the scale a bit smaller. 0.75 and let's set the rotation to be 30. Now you may want to use the pattern without this posterized ramp so let's move this and just press C and type ramp just drop in a regular ramp and then if we press C and type shader and then switch we can place a shader switch here and we can bring this as shader 0 this as shader 1 and instead feed this into there now if we select this shader switch we can use the shader selector here to change between them. Let's start our render view and there you go you can see we're getting the smooth ramp. If we press 1 we're now switching to our posterized ramp. Okay let's just pause this and I'm going to call this switch posterized switch and then we can call this smooth and we'll call this posterized. Let's move these over so we've got a little bit of space here and then if we press C and then try color correct we can drop a color correct node down here and start the render view and what this will allow us to do if we adjust the gamma you can see that what happens is it essentially controls the pitch of the half tone or the dot size. We go lower the gamma makes it overall darker and this is kind of cool we can try this obviously with our posterized result as well because I think it's where you really need it so you don't get those super black areas and you can kind of grade it like so. Now you may want to use color so let's come back here press C type ramp for example here and if we then come down and let's choose a preset I'm just going to choose this black to orange and you can see that what happens here is that because the tone map pattern is generating just black and white, it's only picking from the very first and the very last knot on the ramp. So instead of placing the ramp here, what we can do is we can take the output either from our color correct here or from the switch. I'm going to take it from the switch itself and feed this into the ramp. Now the result that we're going to get now is bypassing the pattern. So if we start the render view, you can see that we're going to get those colors from this ramp mapped onto our posterized result. But we want to include the tone map pattern as well. So to do this, we can add in a color layer and I'm going to feed the ramp into 
layer one color and then let's take the color layer and feed that into the tone map and that's going to give us exactly the same result of course now I want to take my tone map pattern and use that as a mask so if we drop that into here you can see that there we go we are getting a result but it's actually not quite the result that we want we need to be using the mask inverse values so we can come here and we can drop in a change range if we just drop that on the wire there and instead of this outputting 0 to 1 we set this to be 1 to 0 to invert the values and there you go and you can see that's the result so if we come to our color layer here and come to the base layer we can set that to be white and there you go and you can see that we've got that result and you might not see it very easily but we are actually getting that color through the half tone and if we come to the ramp here and come down just remember that these knots here need to coincide with these positions here so we could actually take this ramp and we can take some of these colors for example and bring them up a bit you can see that now we are getting that result there and if we take maybe these and just make them a little bit brighter and more saturated so the result is more obvious and there you go and maybe we could come back here and adjust the gamma to make the dot size a bit larger and you can see that's the result we get from doing that I would also come down and add in a color correct just between this color layer and the output just so we can adjust that final grade if we need to now you may or may not want to include color so we could take this switch here and just make a copy if we unfold this we can take our tone map pattern which will just be black and white or we can take our color corrected version and we can put those into a switch and wire that into our tone map so we can then call this color switch and if we just come up and start the render view you can see that now if we set that to zero we're going to get the black and white output if we set that to one we're going to get the color output so as you can see it's a fairly simple but flexible material we can come here and choose whether or not we want the result to be posterized or not we can come here to the color correct and easily adjust the dot size we can adjust the ramp here if we would like to try different color combinations and of course we can come over here and switch to just purely black and white if we want to i hope you enjoyed that quick tip and don't forget if you're interested in working with the redshift 2 material please check out the hello lux redshift essential 2 material collection available for cinema 4d and houdini so i hope you found that useful thank you for watching